Yeah. From the BART train to a tour bus. Still the same game, except I pull in more sluts, more butts, more butts. Yo! Hey, welcome back. <laughs> Today, we're reacting to Jubilee. Do all comedians think the same? And I know what you're thinking. Dips, another Jubilee video, really? Are you running out of ideas? Yes. Yeah, yes, I'm, I am running out of ideas. I've been uploading every week for a year now. Yeah, I'm, f I'm fucking running out. <laughs> all right, so let's just watch this video. Leave me alone, okay? My boyfriend died, like, a couple years ago. And so I have this joke, like, oh, you guys, I literally got ghosted. And people in the audience get, they get so mad. This is off to a very good start. <laughs> Oh, by the way, right, because I consider myself as a comedian, I will also be participating in this video. <laughs> People expect me to be funny all the time. Three, two, one, go. Anybody ever says to me, oh, you're, you're a comedian, tell me a joke, I just go, pay me. It's my job. I'm not on the clock now. If you want to, if... You want to hear a joke? Or give, like you go to a doctor. I'm a doctor. Oh, does this look infected? Right? Yeah. It's the same thing. But then again, in like airplanes, if someone's dying, they go, is anyone a doctor? And the doctor can't say pay me. <laughs> like that would be fucked up. <laughs> I think that if we were famous, we might strongly agree. <laughs> because people, you know, when I meet somebody, a famous comedian, I'm like, I don't necessarily expect them to be funny, but I'm sure most of the world does, right? Like, I'm sure Dave Chappelle can't even go to the grocery store. I don't know if I want that kind of fame, do you? Um, why not? Can't go to a grocery store. Lady Gaga tweeted this week that fame is prison. And that stuck with well, me so hard. that's the kind of prison I'd want to go to, so. <laughs> I mean, I've heard, I've heard a lot of people talk about fame, like how fucked up it can be. And like, at the same time, it's like, Yes, I am shooting to get like a big audience on YouTube so that I can do it for a living. But I do understand how like the concept of fame can be fucked up. Like, in, yeah, like your life is under a magnifying glass. Whatever you do, mistake or not, is magnified, right? I've seen articles on Twitter where they see someone is wearing the same dress as they did last week and it's a, it's a story, which is fucked up. They are no longer given the same leniency as other human beings. So it can be a prison, but it kind of seems like a nice prison <laughs> from the outside, of course, from the outside. I tell offensive jokes. Three, two, one, go. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have, yes, <laughs> I, uh, yes, yes, I, yes. Yes, I agree, yes. <laughs> okay, um, I joke about the time that I was raped, and so that can, I've had people- Yo! What? <gasps> oh my god. Hey, this is the chick from the last video. This is the chick from the last video. The, the chick, the two piano guy. Oh my god. Hey, yo, I didn't see that coming. And I've had people come and tell me before that um, it was very offensive to them and I am, full, I am not making fun of victims at all. Um, I make fun of just him and the female detective that kind of botched my case. So kind of just, yeah, oh no, it's okay, you know. Uh, when I was first doing the jokes, I think it was a little too raw, so I think it was coming off as offensive. But I think I did, and then I just like waited and then now that I'm coming at it four years later, I, I can come at it as like, I feel like I've ma been able to like make it more funny now. My boyfriend died like a couple years ago. And so I have this joke like, oh, you guys, I literally got ghosted. And people in the audience get <laughs> Yo, these guys are wild. <laughs> these guys are wild. That's mad. That's a bit mad. I talk about white people from my own experience working in corporate America. And I see the shifts and the, you know, the way sometimes people feel uncomfortable. And I like it. <laughs> um, and then I also talk about pussy. And I've, my own grandmother is offended by that. Um, but it's fine because it's like, I have one, you know? A grandmother? <laughs> well, it does make sense because a lot of the times your jokes come from your experiences in the world and what you're seeing in the world and 
um, humor tends to be like a coping mechanism, right? You tend to make fun of the things that would originally get you down because then you can laugh about it and not be as hurt as you would like normally, right? For example, I I I used to I I don't do I do it as much. Yeah, I still do it quite a bit. Where I make like self self deprecating. That's is that the word. Self. I make jokes about myself. I say like I'm lonely, I'm awkward, whatever, because I am. <laughs> but if I can laugh about it, I don't feel as bad about it. I have been personally offended by someone else's joke. Three, two, one, go. Most of them went to strongly agree. I feel like I'd go to I'd go to agree as well. Cause at the end of the day, like we want, we want to say like we're comedians, we're humans, right? We're humans. If someone makes a joke about you or about something that you feel strongly about that you, I guess you're not ready to joke about, it will hurt. And as much as I say we use it as a coping mechanism, it's easier to laugh about the jokes when you're the one that makes them. If I if I was to make a joke and it would offend someone. I would understand and I'd probably apologize because I do understand that jokes can be a, that sometimes like you know it's just offensive. Am I about to do this? Let me quote J. Cole, right? He says all good jokes contain true shit. See him up, you climb up on the hair and you wait. But no, he said all good jokes contain true shit, which is why someone can make a joke and if that shit like cuts deep, it cuts deep, it's gonna hurt. It's going to hurt. It's, it's happened to me, it happens to everyone. Like service announcement, white comics stop trying to say the N word on stage. I was on BET for 10 years. I was probably the most famous white comic on there. I had a, a sitcom on there. Um, I got away with saying anything I wanted on the road and I still never used the word. But what if and it's my daughter's black and I never used it about her or, or okay, my ex-wife or- of, of course you shouldn't use the damn word on your daughter or your wife, what the fuck? Let's say I start dating a white girl and she has to go, sup nigga? I'm, no, no, no. <laughs> what's up with the Me Too movement? I'm like, y'all were raping us. That's what's up with the goddamn movement. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, she has a point. I just didn't expect her to say that. Uh, yeah, shut the them. fuck up. That's, what, that's, that's what's exactly up with right it. That's exactly right. It's not funny. <laughs> it's not going to be funny. And I was just, I was just at a mic and a guy was like, why are girls crying about getting raped? At least you're getting some. And I'm like, oh. Ooh, Hey, man ain't shit. I cannot. My whole mindset as a comic is you could say whatever you want on stage. That's what's wonderful about comedy. It's one of the last bastions of free speech. But at the same time, to go to some places that a lot of these, a lot of newer, unexperienced green comics go to, i.e. offensive, n-word, me too, all of that, is one, lazy writing, and two, jumping into the deep end of a pool when you still have floaties on the second step walking in. I feel like I have also been um, guilty of that as well. Like you try your best to make the most shocking joke because you're going for shock value, but you don't really consider the um, repercussions of it. Like if you yourself are entertained by dark humor and you do get into comedy, you're gonna quickly try to also do dark humor because you think that that's funny. Shock value is funny. It is possible to be both a great comedian and politically correct. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, it's po it's possible. It's possible. I have two words for you, Brian Regan. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Regan is one of the greatest comics out there, and he does not curse. He is not offensive. He sells out theaters since the '80s. I'm not saying he's not a great comedian. But that's the question: Can you be a great comedian and be politically correct? Will anyone remember him in ten years? I'm yes. not saying you won't. I will. Yes. Um, the thing is, yeah, I get what this guy's trying to say. Like, will anyone remember him? But. If you're a great comic, as these guys say, I don't, I've never heard of the guy, but if you are a great comic, people will remember you because you're a great comic. The, the reason people might remember the more unpolitically correct comics is for the wrong reason. They'll remember him because he caused outrage. Um, he, he offended this group of people and they got angry. And you'll be like, remember when he said this and everyone got angry? That's the thing. That's not 
that's not the main reason you want to be remembered as a comedian you want to be remembered for your jokes you can you don't need to be rude to be funny i just i just prefer to <laughs> i'm learning a lot about myself as i'm watching this video because it's actually making me think the thing i always say is that there's always an audience so, so this is not just about comedy just anything in general like no matter what you do there will always be someone that supports you we've seen like serial killers have support groups people like ted bundy and jeff i think jeffrey dharma as well these were serial killers and they had people supporting them saying free this guy which proved to me that there's always an audience whether you're offensive or you're pc there's an audience for that my industry is sexist three two one go But if you think about it, most industries are just sexist. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying like, it's kind of hard for me to pick out an industry that isn't sexist, really. I guess it's, it's, maybe I'm not thinking hard enough, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I really don't see it. It was my first year doing stand up, and I did some like comedy contest or something at like the Haha -Ha Cafe or whatever. And, um, uh, I, I lost, I was the only girl in it, and then um, the guy who was running it comes up to me and he was like, hey, a uh, little bit of advice, if you have big tits, talk about it. Oh. And I was like, t so taken aback, I was just, so, I was like, what, excuse me? And I felt disgusting, I felt objectified. I, I feel like it is kind of harder for women to get into to comedy. If like one woman comedian has a bad set, people can immediately jump up and say like, women aren't funny. Whereas if one male comedian makes a bad set, people don't say men aren't funny, they just say he isn't funny. Cool. Doing comedy is a way for me to work through mental health issues. Three, two, one, go. Um, I will go to strongly agree, because a lot of my, I guess a lot of my mental health issues have come through lack of self-belief. I, I would think like, I'm not good enough. I have no talent, blah, 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 blah. But when I do comedy, when I make jokes, when I make people laugh, I feel like the shit. I feel like a king. I love it, right? So then by doing comedy, I kind of solve that issue because I now see that I do have value. I can do something. Therapeutic for me, it's not therapy. Yes. I don't know if comedy is enough to get me through something. Like if I lost my mom or my dad, I don't know if comedy is enough to get me through that. Um, I agree with you too that comedy is not therapy, but it's incredibly therapeutic. And I have taken, I know personally, leaps in, a, in, in the healing process by taking my pain and turning it into laughter. Yeah, making YouTube videos which are essentially based off comedy, which is why I could, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm explaining why I consider myself a comedian so much. You see, this proves to you how much I didn't believe in myself because I'm even too shy to even put a label on myself. But like doing YouTube videos that have, um, that are based off comedy, which is something I feel like I'm good at, has helped me believe in myself more. I've become a more confident person, right? I will, obviously, I'm still quiet. I'm still reserved i don't walk into a room and announce my presence but i am no longer really worried about meeting new people as much as i used to be i'm not really scared as as much as i used to be I, it may look like i am but I, not really i don't really care that much anymore it's it's still kind of there but it's not as much as it used to be i think yeah. it alleviates the shame factor of whatever you're feeling yeah like if it feels shamed to, I just go and say like yeah i'm a big old bottom with daddy issues all right that's <laughs> yeah, i'm saying it i'm saying it Making jokes about your experiences is like um, saying something before someone says it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people call you a name and then you accept the name, it won't be as funny to them anymore, right? That kind of thing. So if you feel, as he said, if you feel ashamed about something, if you think like, um, if I go like, oh, I'm skinny, right? And I make jokes about it. Someone else makes a joke about it. I'm like, yeah, I make jokes about it too. There's nothing, you're not saying anything new, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? It takes away that factor. Yo, so like a power cut while I, <laughs> while I was recording. I feel so weird like ending it here, but I don't really have much else to say. 
If you enjoy, please make sure you like and subscribe to it. Oh, I feel so such a bad ending. If you enjoy, please make sure you like and subscribe to it with your friends, your family, and anyone else who may like my content. Also, leave a comment down below because feedback does help me quite a lot. Uh, it's been your boy Dips. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. Yeah, peace.